Hey, how's it going? Jamie Fenn here. And as some of you may know, Peter McKinnon just released a brand new variable ND and mist filter combo. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to recreate the mist effect in DaVinci Resolve. If you're wondering what a mist filter does, it essentially makes your footage look a little bit more organic. It softens up footage that modern day cameras and lenses produce. It lowers the contrast just a little bit. And my favorite part, it blooms out the highlights and really creates like a cool dreamy look depending on how strong you make the effect. Now, if you use a mist filter, you're limited to what that strength of the filter is. Also, when you put that filter on your camera, anything that you shoot with it, that look is now gonna be baked into that footage. In today's video, I'm going to show you a few methods that allows you to have full control over how it looks. So let's start with the easiest way first and open up our color tab and go to the blur palette. Okay, so this first method is the one that I would use in the most subtle way first. Okay, here I have a video of myself in the studio with a basic color grade compounded in this node. And we wanna focus on this light here and also the texture of my skin when we apply this effect. So let's go ahead, hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and then press S to add a new node. With that new node selected, come down here to where the teardrop icon and triangle icon is. By default, it should be blur. You wanna select blur and then come down to where it says mist and select mist. Now the next step is we wanna come over here to the radius and drag this effect down. Now I'm going to zoom in on this light over here and you can see what this effect is doing. And what I like to do is drag it down to about 30. Now obviously this looks a little rough, it's very contrasty and sharp and so bringing this radius slider down applies a little bit of sharpness in mid-tone detail. So in order to counter this effect in this look, because it looks really harsh, we want to come down here to our mix adjustment. By default, it's at 100. So if we turn this down to 50, this is where I have found it has no effect. So you can go above 50 and apply a little bit of sharpening like that, or you can go below 50, and I'm going to exaggerate the effects here so you can see. I'm going to zoom in here so you can See how the light is becoming diffused? And it starts to generate a really diffused look. And so what I like to do is kind of go between the radius slider, and you can turn this all the way down, and then adjust this like that to get a cool diffused look. But then the entire image is very dreamy. The skin is smoothed out. It's a little bit lower contrast, but like I said, I would use this in the most subtle way possible. So I would personally probably only go down to about 46 with this effect. And that way you don't make it look too dreamy. And also this specific technique doesn't have a tremendous amount of control like these next two techniques I'm going to show you. Okay, moving on to the second technique. Now, I already have a compound node here with a basic color correction. I'm going to create a new node by holding down Alt or Option and pressing S on my keyboard. And then as soon as I create that node, I'm gonna continue to hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and press L to create a layer mixer node. Then you want to come up to your open effects and select the Gaussian blur. I think that's how you say it. Drag that on top of the node that we just created. Then come up to your horizontal strength and turn this up all the way. The vertical strength should go up with it as well. Now the video clip here has a vignette around it because the border type is black. So we want to select replicate. Now we have a nice clean looking video. The next step that we want to do is come down here to the saturation and turn this all the way down. Now come up to your layer mixer node, right click on it, and we want to change the composite mode to screen. Now personally, I think this is the most strong looking effect and there is a little bit of flexibility when it comes to how we want this to apply to our video footage. So let's go ahead and look at our scopes. So select the waveform icon and select waveform. And I like to have the color eyes turned off so we're looking at just the luma. So I'm gonna turn this off. You can see that our shadows are pretty low. And when you turn on the effect, it raises our shadows. So with this node selected, if you come down here to the curves adjustment, you can basically kind of control how much of the effect is affecting the shadows, and then also with the highlights. So you can see I can crank this up. I'm going to really exaggerate this so you can see it on YouTube. But now you can see how this is affecting the highlights. And so if you want a little bit more of a subtle adjustment, you can play with a creating an S-curve. And if you don't want to do an S-curve, you can just simply drag the shadows down 
And same with the highlights. So if you drag the highlights all the way down, there's almost no effect on the clip, just a little bit. But if you drag it all the way up, you can see that this is what we have. And you will just have to kind of personally look at this and see how much of a dreamy look you want to create. This is probably the most heavy looking effect. And this next third technique I'm going to show you is my favorite because it allows you to have as much control over this look on your video as possible. Okay, so here's my third clip. And this is, again, just a basic compound node with some color correction in it. And so what I'm going to do is create a new node. So hold Alt or Option and press S on your keyboard. Then what we want to do is come up to our open effects. Let's scroll down to where it says Resolve FX Light. Select Glow and drag that on top of the new node that we just created. Now this clip specifically doesn't have any crazy highlights, maybe on her face and not really too much, maybe a little bit in her hair right here. And so it doesn't have any effect as of right now. But if we come up here to where it says select output and select glow alone, what we can do is turn down the shine threshold. And you can see now where this glow is affecting our clip. We can also turn up the spread to make it really blurry over the whole image, or we can turn it down to kind of fine tune those highlights. We can also turn up the brightness. And then let's come back up here to where it says select output and select glowing image. Now, as you can see, this is applied on top of our clip, which doesn't look the best unless this is what you're going for. As you can see, our highlights are clipped pretty heavily. So in order to get a good balance between the look of what this effect is doing in our video, we want to come down here to the composite type and select screen. Now, as you can see, that preserved our highlights. And now we have a clip that looks really dreamy and magical. And so now this is with the effect off. Now, what I love about using this technique is that it really allows you to have full control over how the highlights are affected. So I like to specifically go into the glow alone. And one little detail I pay attention to is when you look at this spotlight right here, that's pretty clipped out. So what I like to do is really kind of fine tune how that's affected. So depending on how much of the highlight I want to have kind of blooming through the clip and also balancing the brightest point in the clip, I really kind of mess between the spread and the shine threshold. So I mess with the spread and I turn this down until I see the brightest points somewhat get bloomed out. And then I also make sure that I'm never clipping. So I'm looking at my waveforms. And so right about there looks good. I always select back to glowing image. And now we have a nice little dreamy look. And now if you want to really intensify this look, you can also just come back to the glow alone, turn down the shine threshold, and start to spread out that glow. Sometimes you have to turn it up all the way. Depending on your video clip, it's always going to be different. And so let's just go with that. Go back to glowing image. And now this will have a glow over the whole video, softening it a little bit, taking away some of the contrast. And like I said, by far, this is my favorite way to do this effect. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe. And if you have any other techniques or different ways achieving this look, comment down below and let me know. I'll see you in my next video.